There are more than 100 unique car bodies in Rocket League now, each of them with their own visual differences that set them apart from each other. They each have strengths and weaknesses and certain mechanics that they're especially good at. Choosing the right car body in Rocket League is an important decision once you start taking the game seriously. And yet, even despite all these options, by the time you reach the top ranks, you only ever really see about three of them. The same three car bodies recycled over and over out of the 100 plus options to choose from. This truly shouldn't be the case, but it's been like this for years. There are plenty of cars in the game that are objectively really good. They're visually accurate to their hitbox, they're customizable so you can make various designs with them, and on a base level, they look pretty cool already. Like, it's not even like they're ugly or anything. But still, Rocket League's most dedicated players continue to ignore them. For as long as the game has existed, it's always worked like this for some reason. However, the reason I'm making this video now is because of some recent news that you could have easily missed. Based on some small changes hidden in some Rocket League updates recently, it's becoming more and more clear that Psyonix is slowly attempting to completely change that. This video is sponsored by Z-League. Z-League is a gaming social media app where you can find teammates, play mini games, or just hang out in the community and more. I know how hard finding a good teammate can be, especially with all the crazy play styles you get from playing with randoms and ranked. Fortunately, Z-League has a really cool system that helps you find a good teammate as fast as possible. Making my account was super fast. I finished setting up my profile in just a few minutes. You just enter a few details like your play style, interests, skill level, stuff like that. And from there, you can send invites to other players that are similar to you. It's that easy. Outside of finding teammates, you can also earn Z coins by playing mini games and entering tournaments, and you can redeem those Z coins for things like gift cards and other cool stuff. There's also a feed where you can check out other people's content and post content of your own. And as you meet more people, you can add them to your squad and then compare each other's high scores in each of the mini games. If any of this sounds cool, you can use the link in the pinned comment below to get started and get 5,000 Z coins for free. Thanks again to Z League for sponsoring the video. Now let's get back to it. To explain why I think this big change is about to happen and what it's going to look like, let's first talk about how hitboxes work currently. As you may know, Rocket League car hitboxes are broken up into six categories. Breakout, Octane, Plank, Dominus, Hybrid, and Merc. Each of these hitbox types have their own subtle differences, the Merc being the tallest out of all of them and the Breakout being the longest. The rest of the categories fall somewhere in between on the spectrum. Every car in Rocket League uses one of these six hitboxes. For example, the Fennec has the Octane hitbox, the battle bus has the Merc hitbox, you get the idea. With so many cars in the game that all look slightly different, you can imagine how some of them are just more visually accurate than others. The Fennec obviously matches up really well, which is why so many professional players love it. While the Scarab on the other hand, uh, it does not. It does not match up very well. And this right here is the driving factor as to why the top players in Rocket League only use a few different cars. If you've already found a car that matches its hitbox perfectly, there's not really any reason to switch off of it. Which, if you think about that from the developer's perspective, it kind of poses a bit of a problem. Not to throw the developers under the bus here, but uh... <coughs> Sorry, uh, I don't know what happened there. Anyway, it's pretty clear that they want you to buy things, in case it wasn't obvious. And normally, you'd expect the most dedicated players to a game to be the most likely to make these purchases, right? But for Rocket League, it doesn't actually work like that for some reason. At least in the case of new cars, the higher ranked players are often less likely to purchase them. And believe it or not, this is a battle that Psyonix has been fighting for years. As I said, this two or three main car issue has existed even since the first season of RLC. At that time, it was mainly Octane, Dominus, and Batmobile, with a few one-off exceptions here and there. Even back then, Psyonix saw this as an issue. So in an attempt to counteract this and make people more comfortable with switching cars, in 2017, Psyonix implemented a car standardization update. This update is what established those categories that we talked about earlier. Before this update, every car in the game had its own slightly different unique hitbox. So Psyonix decided to standardize them because they thought it would make players more willing to change cars without messing up their muscle memory. Unfortunately, this didn't really work. Even though many cars now maneuvered and hit the ball in identical ways, the top players continued to stick to the two to three main ones until a new car was released that changed everything. In July of 2019, Rocket League finally released the Fennec, a new car with the Octane hitbox that matches up fairly accurately on the visual side. Normally, players wouldn't really care about this anyway because they already had the Octane, which met their needs just fine. But for some reason, one single pro player decided to go against the grain and make the Fennec his new main car. 
That player's name was Chassette. Chassette looking to counterattack on the ceiling. Oh! Nailed it! My goodness, Chassette! Nervous, you know, a little bit agitated, a little bit panicky. Oh, oh, oh don't do it, don't do it! Chassette was truly the pioneer of the Fennec. For the first month or so, he was really the only top pro player using it, but that gradually changed as he continued to pop off and outplay some of the best players in the world. By the next RLCS season, the Fennec became more and more popular and eventually solidified itself as one of the most used cars in the game. The thing about this origin story is that the Fennec could have easily had the same fate as any other new car at the time. Just like the Fennec, there were other cars being released that also matched their hitboxes really well. But still, those ones were quickly ignored after a short time. The only difference with the Fennec was that a single top pro player started using it and inspired the entire community to do the same. It's basically a lesson saying that if you want a car to become a staple in the community, it has to catch the eye of the pro scene first. And that lesson becomes important later on, so keep that in mind. Unfortunately, in the following years, Psyonix couldn't find a way to replicate the success of the Fennec. Each new car following it continued that same pattern of being forgotten soon after release. They even tried some other weird strategies to break the mold, like giving new cars a popular hitbox like Octane or Dominus, even if they didn't even match up visually at all. Like they released the Ford F-150 with the Octane hitbox, which is clearly way off on the front and back, so that obviously didn't last long. The Formula One was given the Dominus hitbox, which has to be the worst hitbox choice I have ever seen scene. What? Like, it's crystal clear that it fits a flatter car significantly better, but they still decided to give it the Dominus, probably just because that type is more popular. They later released the Dingo, which actually got a good amount of hype at the time because it's got the Octane hitbox and it does match up pretty well. Unfortunately though, no pro player fully committed to it in competitive play, so it died out as well. Once again, proving that without being integrated into the pro scene, it's near impossible for a car to stick around for long. Being used by the pro scene is truly the final checkbox. It's the last thing you need in order to add another card to that short list of popularity. If you want to add to that, you've got to target the pros. So how do you target the pros? Well, as of recently, Psyonix has been taking a different approach. An approach so different, it may just shake up the Rocket League meta entirely. This is the part of the video that might have you a little concerned or excited, depending on how you look at it. Remember how I said there's only six hitbox categories? Well, truthfully, that was the case up until recently. Just three months ago, back in October for the Haunted Hallows patch, there was a sneaky small adjustment to a single car's hitbox that ended up being a huge deal. And mistakenly, it wasn't even mentioned in the patch notes either. A day after the patch, Halfway Dead revealed exactly what that change was. The Formula One car, which was originally one of the least accurate hitboxes in the game, was suddenly switched from the Dominus hitbox to the Plank category. A flatter and longer hitbox that undoubtedly matches a lot better. Probably should have been like that from the start. But not only that, they also shifted the entire thing way forward to line it up even better, now making for a new, unique seventh hitbox type that only applies to the Formula One. When this was initially revealed, many people thought it was a mistake, until Psyonix Devon replied to confirm that it was indeed intentional, and that the change is now edited into the patch notes. This small adjustment actually makes a huge difference in the gameplay, and I'll explain exactly why in a moment, but it didn't stop there. One month later, when Lightning McQueen released, they announced that it would have the Dominus hitbox. What they didn't announce, once again, was that that hitbox would be slightly shifted backward this time. That's twice in a row now, where Psyonix has created a new hitbox type by just adjusting the position of it relative to the center of mass. And now fast forward to the most recent Rocket Pass, where we got two new cars, the Ace and the Primo. Both of these new cars also follow that same pattern. The Ace has the breakout hitbox, but it's shifted backward a little bit. And the Primo has the hybrid hitbox, but it's shifted downward to the ground a little bit. Now you might be wondering, why is this even a big deal? Like it's still the same hitbox shape after all. Well, the reasoning has to do with this incredibly important part of the hitbox, which we'll call the lever. The lever on a car's hitbox is the distance between its center of mass and the front tip of its nose. The longer this lever is, the more powerful a lot of your hits will be. Before these recent changes, the hitbox type with the longest lever in the game was the breakout. And you can definitely feel the difference because its flicks and touches were a lot more powerful. It's a huge advantage. However, people didn't normally use it anyway because at the same time, it struggled a lot with 50-50s and recoveries because of how flat it is. You can see it pictured here. And for reference, here it is compared to the Octane. 
The Breakout's lever is about 7% longer than the Octane's. So the reason why this new Formula One hitbox is such a big deal is because, according to Halfway Dead, its lever is a whopping 10% longer than the Breakout's. That's 10% longer than the previous longest lever in the game. Essentially meaning that this car's musty flicks, 45 flicks, and nose speed in the air is significantly faster than any other car in the game by far. I tried it out for myself, and it seriously has to be the weirdest car I've ever used, and it's not even a placebo thing this time. Your ability to get insane boomer flicks is just unfair compared to all the other cars. I already, after just a little bit of practice, get like insanely fast flicks every few tries. While this car has some insane advantages that we've never seen before, it also does have some downsides. The big thing to keep in mind is that this car does have the plank hitbox, which is widely considered to be too flat of a car for competitive play. When a car is too flat, it often makes 50-50s and recoveries more difficult, as well as those chip shots, those end up going too high most of the time. So even though it has by far the longest lever in the game, it might not be used in pro play immediately, because of those reasons. But even despite that, Psyonix has shown us that this is the new norm for hitboxes now. Every car that's been released since that change has had their hitbox shifted. My question is, what happens when they do this to a car with the Octane hitbox. If that happens and they make the lever just slightly longer than before, now you just have a single car that has all the benefits of the Octane that we all know and love, plus it has better flicks and slightly quicker movements in the air. You could look at this and be like, wow, that's awesome. You know, it makes the game more interesting now that there's a new car shaking up the meta a little bit. Or you could look at it the other way because the lack of developer interaction with Rocket League's meta is a huge reason why this game is so special. For so long, the meta has slowly evolved on its own because players have just been getting better and better and continuing to raise the skill ceiling. So for the developer now to be introducing new changes that manually shift the game's meta, it kind of goes against that idea. So let me know what you think in the comments. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Thank you as always for watching. Uh, 2024 is going to be a great year and I'll see you in the next one.